And you'll notice this one's more danceable. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm still here sitting with Carl and we decided to do one more listen to a Rush piece while here because the last one, which was also my first Rush experience, was so enjoyable and it was a sort of enriching element to have you here and be able to discuss this part of it. So we decided to do one more before we leave. And this second one is called YYZ. And thankfully, I have a Rush fan here to tell me how to pronounce it so that you don't all come eat me alive if I were to say YYZ, because I'm sure I would have done that had I not been told. So this is YYZ by Rush from the album Moving Pictures. And Carl tells me it comes a two, three, four-ish years later after the first one I listened to, which was La Villa Strangiato. So let's just see what happens and how it goes and we'll go from there. in the background. Interesting. Interesting. So this one is uh, starts off a whole lot more aggressively than than La Villa Strangiato. Well, as I mentioned in that in that video, Carl told me that that this band has a wide range of styles. So I can't say that I'm surprised, but it was a, it, it's a completely different feel to the opening of this piece. I kind of like that little Morse code entrance. Ding 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 ding. And I guess I'll talk to you some more about that yeah, when we well. get to the when we get to the end here. I also like the way that in spite of all this heavy opening, they took the time to add that that little violin melody sitting way above it, it adds a nice extra dimension. Again, I feel like it would have been fine without it. It would have been totally fine without it. But to add that extra touch makes it a little bit extra special. Um, let's back up just a little bit because we came to a significant halt here and just hear the transition as we go into the next portion. I kind of like the way it sounds like they're just getting ready to start off and go do something really quick. It's almost like they're saying, ready, get ready, get ready, get set. Okay, now we're going. <laughs> let's hear that again. Hurry up, guys, let's go. Here we go, off on a journey. Changed it a little bit here. Kind of the same rhythmic setup, but the melody is different. Here's where we are.
nice little interjection here. And that bass is running all over the place. that I know about <laughs> which is here by the way ah now we have a nice little guitar line crashes. Whatever this is, it's crashing. Okay, that was cool. That was cool right there. That sounded like, that sounded like something that I would hear in something Pagani. It's a it's a sequence. It's a it's a little bit of a, a figure, which is carried on down and and walks us down, steps us somewhere, or it could carry us up. But here it carries us down, and it sounded so much like what I would expect to hear in some virtuosic violin piece. Kind of fun. All right, so I have to ask you what these crashes are when we get and to I'll the end of this. I'll tell you what they are later. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it sounds kind of like breaking glass and ah, a horse good. whip. You're, you're and, on it. Okay, we'll and, talk later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's, let's back up a little bit and then we'll keep going. Here it is. That's that little violin part. Back to this, but we heard this earlier. I like that little melody. Oh, that was cute. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so we have dum bum 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 dum bum bum bum, and so it goes. And you hear that a few times, and then he took it up into what sounded like harmonics. I don't know if it was harmonics, but it sounded like a harmonic, several octaves up. Yes. I got to hear that again. And there it is. I'm not sure how they marked that in here. Hey, Dirk, let's go back to the station. Great, I got the new Rush cassette for the road. Yes. What the heck does that mean? Probably some new term for marijuana. No good dope smoking degenerates. I should have known as soon as I saw those kimonos. That's a funny way to end. I hope that you heard what I caught in that little melody. 
bum, 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 and so on. And then at some point, he took it up to where it was this squeaky little, squeaky little melody, but the same thing. And again, that reminds me of a virtuosic violin classical something or other because they they're famous for doing those wild things they were pushing the violin to the max and it sounds here kind of like they're they're doing the same thing with the guitar of how how creative can we be with this instrument and how colorful how dynamic and how can we take it out of the norm and still have it be attractive appealing so that was kind of a fun little thing to catch there as well I get the impression that when Rush writes a piece of music, again, I've only listened to two now, but when they come to the end, they're just done. They've said, all right, we did everything. Skip the, skip the big bombastic dramatic deciding how to end the piece or, or don't bother bring it, bring it to a fancy close. Just, we're done. And, and it happened here where it was just suddenly done. Well, they added that little conversation at the end, which was kind of interesting, amusing. But the previous one also, it just was done when it was done. <laughs> so there we have it, my first impressions. And now I want to ask Carl, what on earth were those kind of glass breaking, it was glass. crashing? Was it really yep, glass? They, they, they used glass for that and shattered it to <laughs> emphasize what was going on. Oh, wow. Um, and it's interesting because some of them are on beat, some of them are off beat. Mm -hmm. it, it gives it a very jerky yeah. feel through there. But yes, yeah. and when I played this song in the band I was in with Graham and Tice, it was, I, I ended up using a percussion pad, which I've shown you on my kit, in order to emulate that glass shattering. And so you have I to make, see. Because uh -huh. some people who don't have the equipment, they'll use a cymbal to do it. And they're not, no, I want this thing authentic, uh -huh. like what Rush did. So I actually use glass shattering, and yep, it sounds exactly like what you heard there. Yeah. So is there any story to the piece? I mean, does the glass have any shattering have any significance, or is uh, it just a sound effect that they... I think it's more of a sound effect okay. than anything uh -huh. else. But yeah, you bring up a really good question about the story. So uh, in this song, um, YYZ, and why it's named what it is, when the band used to go out on tours, mm -hmm. Alex Lifeson, the guitarist, is also a pilot. Okay. And when they used to fly back into Ontario, Neil Peart would have the headset on listening to the radio and stuff like that. And as they were approaching Toronto, he'd hear the... Da, 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 like what I heard at the opening there. Yes, which is Morse code for YYZ, because if you're a pilot and you're listening to it, you go... Hey, we're near the Toronto airport. We have to be because we're hearing it in Morse code. The band then, in fact, Getty and, or Getty and uh, Neil, Getty Lee being the bass player vocalist and Neil Peart being the drummer, they actually wrote most of this song before Alex even got involved with it. And so it was very rhythmic oriented, as you uh -huh. can hear. Yeah, this yeah, is far, it more, is much far more, more rhythmic, rhythmic than La Villa Strangiato, as an example. Right. You also find... Also, that there's rushes really, really amazing at everyone stopping together and everyone starting together. And right. it may not sound that difficult, but try playing it and counting it and figuring out where you've got to stop and where you've got to start. And it's unbelievably difficult. So the song was based around this theme of YYZ, which is Toronto. Did you have a question there? No, I was just going to say, as far as it being difficult, I understand because you have percussion going here you also have these other instruments and i know that i know that with melody instruments it's easier to cheat a little bit if you listen to a classical orchestra and the violins and all the string instruments sound like they're right locked together try taking those same set of musicians and putting them on some percussion instruments and get them to strike together right it's it's hard Yep. And I am sympathetic towards that difficulty because as a player of struck and plucked yep. instruments, it's that moment of engagement where you have to be right on. And if you have multiple instruments, it's tough. Yeah, we call that precision. Yeah. Which is uh, one of the uh, virtues if you're a musician. 
if you can play with precision. Yeah, there's nothing to go against the squishy music we talk about <laughs> where things are a little more loose. Yeah. But what makes this music technically so difficult is that precision. Exactly. Now, getting back to the storyline. So we know it's about YYZ. Now, if you follow the music with the idea that you're in, on an airplane. Okay. And then you hear the ting, 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 ting. And you're up in the atmosphere and uh -huh. you're coming in. And then you go into the theme. Okay. You're merrily flying along. And then all of a sudden the music starts to break. And you have this call answer between the drum and bass guitar. Mm-hmm. I would argue that sounds like turbulence because normally as you come down closer see that. I can see that. to right, the ground, right, you get right. turbulence. Mm -hmm. Things are starting to mix up. So it's that meeting between the air mass and the land, bass, guitar. They're now fighting against each uh, other. And, then you, and so then it makes sense to have the conversation at the end because they've now, they're now walking out to their vehicles. Okay, to... and that, 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 so you're getting ahead of the game. Okay. <laughs> but yes, totally fair. But then you said... Oh, listen, we got a really smooth pattern where mm -hmm. all the keyboards come in and da, 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 uh -huh. da. That's your landing. You've now come in. You've gone through the turbulence. You're right, now, you've landed. You know how you float and, just before and, you land yeah. on an aircraft. Mm -hmm. Guess what that's conveying? And then, as you said, it comes, it now taxis in. You do the uh -huh. thing. Engines are shut off. The music stops. Boom, we're done. So... You've said this before because I've seen you say it in, in some of your other videos. And I would agree with you. But real masters of music, like I'm talking about the top 1% of, of musicians out there, they can tell stories just using instruments. Yeah. They don't need lyrics. Definitely. And you know from the masters. Yeah. Uh, I think we were talking about Magorsky the other day, uh, uh -huh. Night on Bald Mountain. You can get the story out of that particular piece exactly, of music. Exactly, right. And I'm sure that uh, if you all uh, are aware of it, you can go to Amy and learn more about music on your... Uh... Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm going to be running very soon a series on how to get into classical music, how to understand it if you don't really know how to relate to it, or if you're curious to see what else classical music has to offer than the standard repertoire that everybody knows and everybody hears and is t sick and tired of hearing. It's a vast field and there's something for everybody. So on my Coffee and Patreon pages, I will be um, putting up a series very soon starting to walk through all these different parts of classical music that, that I love Currently, I'm running a music theory course on there, which is already up and going. You're welcome to join at any point. It will continue as well, and all kinds of things happening in those areas. But yeah, going yeah, on. So once you start understanding that, and this is where many people who are the average listener who don't want to get into complexities in music, they don't mm -hmm. want to understand the concepts behind it. They may very well not like a piece of music like this. But for, those, okay. but for those of us who do understand the complexity and how you speak with music, this becomes very exciting. Yeah. Now, a, a point of interest for this song, this song was nominated for a Grammy Award. It's the only Canadian instrumental in history that was ever put up for a Grammy Award. It subsequently lost out to the police with their song Behind My Camel, which you and I can have a look at a later okay. date. Um, it's quite a bit different than what we're listening to here as an instrumental. Mm -hmm. But the, the beauty of this particular song, and Rush in general, is there's something about Canadian music and Canadian musicians. They seem to love to tell stories, whether it's instrumental or whether it has vocal uh, elements to it. And Neil Peart, the, the, band, the band's lyricist in Rush, I would say was a genius not only for his ability to play the drum set, but also his ability to write lyrics, which we will mm, get into mm -hmm. when we start listening to Rush music that has with lyrics. lyrics. Because with lyrics, these have been instrumental. Yeah, without the lyrics, yes, the music is amazing. With the lyrics, it ramps it up to a very okay. different level. Now, getting back to the song here, um, even the parts where the drums and the, uh, the guitars are playing mm -hmm. off against, the, or the bass guitar is playing off against each other, some of those grooves are so hard to play. And again, the average listener, it they might wild. say, oh, well, this is all they're doing. They're just yeah. going around. No, he's doing it in triplet feels and things. So it's got this 
other level of complexity that's mm -hmm. going on throughout mm -hmm. the uh, song. So, again, the, the, the piece of music stands on its own. It's a standalone piece of music with a story to it. Um, incredibly in-depth, incredibly complex uh, what's going on within all the different levels. And, again, the use of, again, at the beginning of the, so the song, using crotales. Um, something that's not used in contemporary music very often, but Neil... Why isn't it? Because uh, it's, a, it's a great sound. Yeah, um, I honestly can't say, probably because most drummers don't even know they exist. Okay, that's fair enough. That's likely the most reason, uh, or greatest reason. Um, so, and it's what makes Rush so amazing, and, and something for your audience as well, is you have to understand that all of those stringed instrument sounds are being done by Geddy Lee, who's playing a bass and playing some pretty ripping bass parts, and he's doing the same thing with his feet, uh, okay. playing mm -hmm. the string parts on something called Taurus pedals, where he could access sounds from his keyboard through his feet. So the guys are doing multi-level uh, and uh, multi-tasking uh, mm -hmm. as they're playing. And, and what I find very interesting about Rush is Alex Lifeson, their guitarist, is in my opinion, probably one of the most underrated guitarists on the planet. And it's because he's overshadowed by two amazing musicians <laughs> in the form of Neil Peart and Geddy Lee. So that's essentially what I have to say about okay. the piece in general. If uh -huh. you have any other questions or anything comes up and you're doing your in-depth stuff on it. Right, um, I can always yeah, call you up and, bounce it off and, me and, and I'll, I'll tell you what I know about it. But I'm going to approach this in depth from the perspective of looking at this as a story. Yes. So thank you for pointing me in that direction because if I had missed that, I think I would have missed a whole lot in the music. Sure. But understanding the story behind it is, it, it's already making sense in my mind and I'm going to very much enjoy sharing it with you all when I get to that point. So keep an eye out for that. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link is up here to the in-depth. It's already published, and I will see you soon. Ask me no questions, and I'll tell, tell you, you no lies. lies.